Jeff, Arizona Hot Homestead, and welcome back subscribers and YouTube viewers. Look what I got here. I got a hole in my trailer. I got a hole in my RV. And then I got this box there. Then I got another box over there. Basically, here's what I'm doing. All my... On my RV, this is a hot water tank. It's a six gallon hot water tank. It's propane and electric. Now, this hot water tank, the tank itself leaked. And I noticed in the kitchen there was a bunch of water there. They couldn't tell where it was coming from and sure enough, it's this guy. So I went to an auction and believe it or not, they had at the auction the exact same model exact same who would have thunk it so today I am replacing it with one that I hope works it was at the auction and it looks like it's brand new basically when I look at when I look at some key things like some of the um, the crow that's on the uh, on some of these fittings and elements and things and then I look over there at that new one there's like nothing and it's all shiny and stuff so at this auction I bought that hot water tank that hot water heater 70 bucks on sale it's 350 bucks maybe the tank works and I can just exchange out the tanks because even the tanks are like 150 200 bucks at least so anyhow and since I really don't have a clue on what I'm doing I decided to just go with the auction. Besides 70 bucks, you almost can't go wrong. So anyhow, so I've taken this guy out. Now, I should have started my video sooner, but I kind of forgot because I really wasn't too sure what the heck I was doing. So let me just kind of explain a little bit. This guy here has tabs on the end. See if I can bend these tabs back. These tabs bend like say, and you got your screw holes. So all four sides bends out like say. What happens is that's where it attaches right here. So I gotta clean this up before I get the other one on. But it attaches right like say. Now when you go to take this guy off, you have to make sure on the inside, see how this comes out. That's your cold line. So I had to make sure that was turned off. I did it from the inside access panel. And I unplugged that from the tank itself. Then there's a hot water outlet. And you shut that, and I went ahead and shut that one off and I shut that off, there's three shut offs. I went ahead and shut all three off just to make sure. I had already drained the tank through the the drain valve right here. I've already unplugged that and drained what was in it. So now all the water lines are disconnected. Then right here is the propane line. So then I went and turned off my propane. So at my, I actually turned it off in two locations. Let me show you here. I have a shut off right there and then I have a shut off on my main tank I would hand shut both off so my refrigerator is not running I have no propane the lines are cleared out then I disconnected my battery so that line right here where is it is the negative I went ahead and just took off the negative I still have a plug on plugged into my solar panels so I'm charging the battery still, but I have no power now to the trailer. So now that means I could disconnect this guy here. And as I pull it out, I have these wires here. I disconnected. And then there's some other wires here that I also had to disconnect off of the old one. I've already reconnected this to the new one. And then I said, oh no. Maybe I should be doing a video on this. So far it's been a lot easier than I expected. So, I unscrewed all these guys around here. I undid, 
my plumbing, shut it off, turned off the power and the propane. I unplugged the propane just by unscrewing this. That goes right here. And they had this all filled in just to bugs and other stuff and dust from getting in, I guess. So I had to cut this a little bit with a knife just to loosen it a little. It's a little bit flexible, but I still had to cut it to make sure that it wasn't gripping onto my gas line because I don't want to take that propane line and move it too much because even though it's copper and even though it goes into the floor down there, I still don't want to move a copper line just because if I loosen anything by accident, then I got myself a leak and then that leak might take forever to find or maybe never find and I lose propane. All that's done. As I pulled it out, it was really easy to, to pull out. Just kind of wiggled it around and brought it right through the hole. These wires just kind of as you're wiggling around, the wires go around the side here. So I was able to reach in through the side and start pulling. Eventually got the wires through. Then I disconnected the wires. So now I'm putting it back together. And I said, hey, why aren't I doing a video? So I'm giving you my video. So replacement of a hot water tank. Now that I got these guys wired up, I'm gonna tape them. And the only reason why I'm gonna tape them is just to help keep them together. So as I push it in, it kind of stays together. Once I get it in, I'll show you what it looks like once I get it in. Oh, and also this. These guys here, I had to take these off of the other one and look at this. When I removed them, they had put some of this, this seal, this, uh, this brown stuff on here. I guess that's fine, but that also, also tightened this up so much that it was difficult to get these off. Because of all this other crud that's on here that I can't get off, I decided to go ahead and get new ones just so I had something clean to work with. And then I went ahead and just taped them up. There's not a lot of pressure on this, so I shouldn't have too much of a problem. But I went ahead and, and taped up both sides of what they call the hex, because it's a hex head here, a hex head coupler, because it's, it's a half inch on each side. So I did that on the inlet and the outlet. That's the inlet. That's the outlet. And then we're going to, uh, let me put it in. Don't know how well you can see this here in the glare of the sun, but I got black and orange, blue to blue, white to red, and green to green. Now, I took a picture of this before I took it apart, and that way I make sure I got the wiring back the exact same way same with the other three wires I did on the other box so I got the same wiring that's I put back on and so obviously when you're dealing with wiring you want to make sure that you uh, color code it mark it do something to make sure that you get your wiring exactly the same so let me go ahead and finish pushing this back in and then I gotta hook up the uh, the propane I don't know how well you can see this, but when you're putting this back in, I've got these wires up high because my propane line is coming in right about here. So wires that keep up high, propane line coming down there. The reason why I'm doing that is making sure these don't get crossed. I don't want them to overlap each other or cross each other. I want them to be apart from each other so that they don't get entangled. So just a big tip. When you're putting this back together on your hot water heater, your RV hot water heater, just make sure your gas line, your propane line, and your wires don't get entangled. Entangled lines, period, just are an issue. So let me finish putting it back in. All right, so here we are getting ready to set up this propane line. This grommet here that filled in this hole right in through here. Well, the grommet. And this fitting here doesn't work. If that fitting wasn't there, the grommet would go on, it'd go through that grommet with no problem. Which makes me wonder, on the old one, they had all this gunk on here. 
that all this stuff around here. So it makes me wonder if they ran into the same kind of issue and so they just filled it up with some caulking. Now you want to do this because this line here will eventually, will actually leads into the cabin, into the main trailer. And if you got a gas line leak here, well, you don't want it to go through here. You'd rather it actually come outside. So what I'm gonna have to do is basically kind of the same thing that they did. I'm gonna hook up that gas line and then once it's all hooked up and all tightened on the sides here and all this, then I think I'll uh, I'll just cock it just like they did. So, and I'll save that grommet then for something else. But just so you know, when you're setting this up, unless you're really good with um, with copper piping, you can cut that and refit it and all that. But I'm not good with that, so I'm not going to mess with it. So, I'm just going to remove the grommet and just cock all the all the rest of the hole there so gas doesn't get inside the trailer if that's if it were the lake so let me continue I don't know how well you can tell but I got a bead of caulking on here did it all the way around I just used some ordinary caulking stuff just because I had it handy so and now I'm going to bend these over and put screws in all the holes on these tabs here they actually were a lot easier to bend than I expected because I just used it the kind of the framework of the trailer to hold it in place and leverage and then you just bend this with your hands and once you got it close then you can start putting screws in it just brings it really together nicely they have these great corner pieces that are already on and it's nice because it helps close in that gap there and there's also a screw hole there for that guy there so let me go ahead and continue with my install of my hot water heater. Hot water heater installed on my RV. Yay. All right. Propane line hooked up. Soap tested. Water lines hooked up. Valves opened up. And if you can hear it, I know it's pretty windy out. I don't know if you can see. See some flashes of stuff down in there. Well, that heating element there getting red, well, that's gas going through and neither keeping it going. I put the door on, and on this door, you have these hooks here, and they're pretty, pretty simple to put on. That way I can open and close my door here so gas and electricity is back on I've not blown the fuse I don't smell gas well it's windy out so it's kind of difficult but all my soap tests are fine and everything is good so in about 20 minutes or I think 30 minutes I should have six gallons of hot water and I can Take a hot shower instead of a cold shower. Yay! So, Jeff Arizona Hot Homestead, and I just installed an RV hot water tank. Just to give you an idea of the tank I got, here's your numbers on it. The GC6AA 10E, six gallons. Bought this tank at an auction for 70 bucks. Whoa! Home run. Knocked it out of the park. Sealed just fine. Looks looks like it's supposed to be there. So now I have a hot water tank for sale if you want to buy it. Tank leaks. I'll sell it to you for, let's see, I bought that one for 70, so I'll sell you this one for 100. No, I'm kidding. I'll probably hang on to this. There might be parts in here that maybe someday I would need. You know how it is when you're living on a homestead. You gotta have parts just in case something goes bad because after all, I'm 35 miles off grid. So 
it's it's 70 miles round trip just to go to a to town to a hard to a hardware store or Walmart or a grocery store or anything like that so um, having this kind of stuff laying around is pretty nice I just need to neatly put it in my shed or something so anyhow that's Jeff Ferris on the Hot Homestead don't forget to like subscribe share comment on the installation of my RV hot water tank six gallons completed baby actually you know it took me three hours overall and not knowing what the heck I was doing I was double and triple checking everything and but it's working fine I guess I'll take a shower here in a few minutes